How's it going folks? Chris here out on another Sunday. It's uh, nice weather again, luckily. We're expecting it to, uh, you know, to st the winter to start drying in so it seems it's near end of October now. But uh, I'm quite lucky so far this year. Been able to get out mostly every weekend. I'm actually hoping you'll be able to hear me because this exhaust is getting uh, way too loud. <laughs> it's, like I mentioned in that last video, it's uh, it's blowing slightly. I've got like, like a series of holes going up the up the silencer, so it's uh, pretty loud at the moment. <laughs> it sounds like some like massive uh, 1200 cc bike when it's just this little uh, 125 that doesn't actually go anywhere. But uh, I've got a topic for this uh, this week's video. On one of my first videos, uh, a couple of guys asked about um, you know learning to learning to ride, getting a motorbike license. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about that today. Uh, obviously, I'm uh, only on a 125, which means I'm on uh, you know what's what's classed as a provisional license. I've got L plates on it, so I'm only going to really talk up to that point and uh, you know explain what's in, what what to expect on your CBT. If you want to do your full, if you want to get onto uh, any size bike, there's about uh, about three or four steps. You first, you've got to uh, either have a provisional license or a driver's license, so you can do uh, you can you can get onto a motorbike from 17. No matter what you want to ride, you first got to do the CBT, which is a compulsory basic training. And then once you've done that, you can then uh, that's that's kind of like you got your provisional motorbike license. So you can ride around with L plates uh, and, and, and practice until you do your, your, your bike, your full bike test. Your full bike test, depending on whether you do the normal one or the direct access, either grants you a full license to be able to ride up to 125, or if you do the direct access, you then, you, 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 well, with a normal motorbike license, you, you then have to wait for two years on a 125 without L plates before you can move on to any other bike. With direct access, you do that extra bit of training it's basically the same test but you do it on a bigger bike and then you can go into any size engine you know once you've passed your, your test plus to add into all that you've got to you've got to do a motorbike theory test which is one of the things i think stupid i mean i've as a car driver for the last like 10 years i've obviously done a theory test and i know the rules of the road but i've got to do the theory test again to prove that i know the theory <laughs> so uh, there's a lot to a lot to do to get your full bike license which is why i'm riding around on a uh, a 125. I've got uh, weddings coming up next year, so most of the funds are going towards that. But to do your uh, CBT, that allows you to get out on the road just after a day's worth of training, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. So compulsory basic training, and the key word is training. It's not actually a test, so uh, you do you can't actually fail it if you if you don't uh, get your certificate by the end of the first day. You just go back and you just continue until you've actually uh, you know until you, the, the instructors are comfortable with your skills and uh, you can you know get out onto the road. You can do your uh, CBT from 17. Well, yeah, I think you can actually do it from from 16 if you wanted to get onto a moped. But uh, talking about motorbikes with uh, with gears, I think it's from 17. Although I would probably recommend that if you are 17 and you've not got if you've not started learning to drive in a car, that you do start your car t your car lessons first. At least from my experience of doing the CBT, they don't teach you much about the rules of the road, and obviously being on a bike, you're a lot more vulnerable than you would be in a car. So let's let's say if you're in a car and you don't really know what you're doing even though you should be <laughs> should know what you're doing if you've been doing your lessons but uh, what I'm saying is like if you if you uh, cut someone up on a roundabout the worst that's going to happen in a car is that you're going to have a collision if you do the same thing on a bike if, if it's your fault you've cut someone up you're going to come off you're going to have that collision plus you've got the risk of actually being run over and you know, like having a broken leg broken arm or a crushed head and getting killed so uh, I definitely yeah, recommend doing your car lessons first, but if you are 17 and you're getting straight out onto the road on a motorbike, definitely yeah, read the highway code from page to you know cover to cover uh, a couple of times through, just so you, you're, we you're well clued up on uh, how to 
you know, the, the rules of the road and how to operate uh, roundabouts, dual carriageways and everything like that. Because the thing is with a bike, you've, you've not only got to watch out for what you're doing, you've got to watch out for all other numpties as well. So you've got to be really clued up and, uh, and concentrated on what's, uh, what's happening. Once you've decided to do your CBT, the next stage then is to actually find somewhere to do it. If you look, uh, you know, to Google search online for, for CBT courses in your area, and uh, what I'd recommend doing is is, is asking the asking the people how many uh, pupils they take on at any one time in any one session. You know, how many how many pupils there are per instructor. The legal limit is four for the uh, off-road training and then two per one instructor for the on-road training. The company that I did mine with, this is a big hill that my bike's not going to be able to get up. <laughs> the company I did mine with do, uh, did a um, uh, two, uh, they had two instructors and two, two pupils, which was perfect because uh, when I did mine, uh, there was a girl who uh, you know didn't pick it up quite as fast as me. So I didn't... Uh, where are we going? You know, so I weren't held back from uh, from her not progressing quite as quickly. She stayed with one of the instructors, and I managed to, you know, go off at the other side of the uh, training area and, and carry on, you know, progressing at my own level with the uh, other instructor. So once you've uh, chosen somewhere, got it up, you've got it booked. It costs around just over 100 quid, and it's about a day's worth of training, nine till five-ish. It starts off with. Uh, theory-based stuff, so they, you know, they run through the the safety things of riding a bike. It's all boring stuff. That's pretty, uh, pretty obvious. You know, you you're not as visible and uh, types of helmets you should wear and things like that. And they also run through, uh, you know, your little questions on highway code and things like that. So if if you can uh, show that you already know that sort of thing, you know, when they ask questions on highway code, you know, and you know forward and answer the questions and uh, that'll probably help go through that uh, initial stage a little bit quicker and then uh, you'll you'll go out and then they show you the the basic controls of the bike and you do like a walk around and they show you like where, where you you know where your throttle is where your clutch is that explain how the gears work which again is something that you could really learn before and just to you know speed things up if you've got two people who are uh, you know, pretty clued up on how, how it works, you can potentially save a bit of time then without having to, you know, spend a lot of time going through stuff that you that you could learn learn by yourself. So just to run through that quickly. You've got your right hand, that's your throttle. That controls how fast the engine is going, just the same as your, your right foot pedal, your throttle pedal on your on your car. Your right foot is your back brake. So your right hand side is your uh, your, your moving forward and your stopping. And then your, all your left hand side is to operate your gears. You've got your left lever and your left hand. That's your clutch. So you push that down, you know, to change your gear. And then you've got your, uh, your your gear stick, so to speak, gear selector on your left foot. It does take a little bit of uh, figuring out how the gears work because it's it's down into first gear, up into neutral, then two, three, four, and five. So that takes a bit, a bit of getting used to at first, but uh, you soon pick it up. And especially once you once you actually get onto the bike, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. So once you've done that, you then uh, allow to actually get on the bike and uh, you know put it all put all this theory into practice and and practice starting off and stopping and then basically you just progress from there you then you start off to stop then you start off change gear in second change back down into first and stop and then you just start doing laps of the, of the little training area And then you move on to your little manoeuvres, which is your, your slow control. And uh, that's basically when you're, you're kind of like dragging your brake, 
holding it on the bike at the same time in order to control the bike in a, to do a slow, a slow speed manoeuvre. So that takes a little bit of getting used to it. You'll do that at first as if there's a, a little uh, imaginary junction. So you like you, you, you slow down to this junction, you look in both ways and if it's clear you carry on. And then that then progresses onto your manoeuvres which is your figure of eight and your U-turn and things like that. So you, you do quite a lot of time off-road which is, you know, riding around cones, doing your slalom, your, your figure of eight. Then uh, in the afternoon, if you've progressed to a safe enough level, you then get taken out on the road and you put all this, uh, all this that you've learned into practice. You are in uh, radio contact as well with the instructor and he'll tell you where you should be going. And you do like a, a range of different roads, you do some country roads where you've got to try and get this 125 up to, up to 60-ish, <laughs> as fast as it'll go. You also do some little, uh, you know, estate roads, doing lots of junctions left and right and roundabouts as well. It's funny actually, when I did uh, my on-road riding, he was really impressed and he couldn't believe that he'd got, he'd got someone who, you know, didn't hesitate at every junction, didn't stop at every junction if it was clear. And uh, they always take their blue pupils on a, on a roundabout where the right-hand lane is, uh, is, is straight on. You know the left lane is left only, and that he, he was saying that catches everyone out. And he was surprised that I actually knew which lane to get into. But I guess they take, uh, I guess they, they do take on a lot of very new riders at 17, 18, as opposed to people who've been uh, driving for you know for 10 plus years. So once you've completed the day and they're uh, satisfied with everything that you've that you've done, that's when you. Uh, you get your little certificate and then you can get out onto a little 125 with L plates and uh, and ride around for two years, up to two years until you've then at some point you've got to done, done your full bike license or you have to retake your CBT again in order to renew it for another two years but uh, I mean I've, most people like me will probably do uh, do the full direct access you know within uh, within that two years which is what I'm planning to do next year definitely say it's worth just doing your CBT first before going on you know going onto the full bike because it gives you that opportunity to get straight out onto the road and it keeps the cost down because you've also not you've not only got to pay for your licenses but you've also got to pay for all your gear and all your kit which uh, can be quite expensive so at least not having to pay the full like 400 and whatever odd quid it is to then do your full license can, you can quickly get out onto the road just by doing a day's worth of, a day's worth of training. And even though it is only a 125 and you quickly get used to power and you wish that you could have something a bit bigger to pull you up those hills, at least you're still out on the road and you get into practice. And, and like I've experienced now, I've, you know, I've picked it all up within a matter of like a couple of sessions, even, even just like the first time I went out on this bike. You know, you, you pick it all up and you, you get used to it so fast that you could then go into your full test and, you know, just fly through it just from having a couple of a couple of lessons just to get used to the, you know, the bigger bike and just to go through the things that, you know, the more advanced stuff that you, uh, that you do on, um, you know, the full, the full test. So when I eventually do my full bike test next year after March sometime I'll definitely uh, you know follow up with some like an overview of the full the full test and what sort of things you can expect but uh, that's about everything you can expect from your CBT it's, it's definitely worth doing I mean let me know as well if, if anyone's actually interested in me doing a little overview on how the how a motorbike how to you know how to ride a motorbike what all the controls do how to do these little slow 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 speed maneuvers could do a little bit of extra practice myself so I've not, <laughs> not really done them since uh, you know since doing that CBT it's not every day you need to do a figure of eight <laughs> maneuver I guess one other thing I could talk about is the sort of, sort of things you need to take with you 
obviously you need that uh, provisional or full driving license just to show that you're eligible to be able to do the course but uh, the place will be su- the, no doubt the place will supply helmet jacket gloves all you need to really take is uh, depending on the weather you know a certain number of layers and uh, you know some quite thickish jeans unless you've got obviously got the motorbike uh, trousers and uh, the other thing is your footwear as well I wore my uh, my walking boots where am I going here Well, that's, uh, <laughs> I wore my, my walking boots but I did find that uh, they were quite quite chunky and I did get them stuck between the uh, the gear selector and the foot peg a couple of times and with them being quite thick oh this uh, floor is bright from the sunshine it's quite a cool little track though <laughs> so dodge all this uh, horse manure I did, I did also find the difference between the walking boots and when I got these motorbike boots is the, the sole on the motorbike boots is a lot thinner and you can feel your brake a lot better so it does make dragging your brake a lot easier when, when you're doing those slow manoeuvres but uh, you want to be wearing some kind of boot so you're not going to roll your ankle over you know if you're wearing trainers I don't think that's mandatory but uh, it's something just to bear in mind no idea where this little track runs. <laughs> it's quite cool though, let's see where it, where it uh, turns out. This is the sort of thing that's fun about uh, riding a motorbike, you can just take these random little tracks and, and follow them around everywhere. Right, so I hope this uh, little video helps out and gives you a little insight on what to expect on your CBT. I'll definitely be documenting my progress as I go through the, you know, the few lessons and uh, the the two, well, yeah, the two big tests. I think you have to do mod- module one and module two. Well, I know where we are. So I'll uh, definitely be uh, documenting my progress next year when I do that. So uh, as always, thanks very much for watching, and uh, I'll catch you all later.